Hi everybody, this is a short video to explain how buffer stock schemes work and particularly to show how the diagram works and this is at the request of Noor and Sky. So, a buffer stock scheme, it can be set up by governments working together, a number of governments, or it could be set up by one government where exports and imports of a certain product are controlled. Buffer stock schemes are generally operating for commodities and the purpose of them is to address the fact that the prices of commodities are often volatile because we know that commodities have a world price. So, for example, for cocoa or coffee and the world price goes up and down according to the supply shooting up into the sky and the demand going downwards. And demand and supply determine the price of the commodity. And therefore, if there's an increase in demand, for example, the price would go up. If there was a, a, an increase in supply, then the price would fall and so on. So the price can be very volatile. The point of the buffer stock scheme is to reduce this volatility of prices. So what happens in the buffer stock scheme is that a floor price is set. The floor price, which is below the equilibrium, is the lowest that the commodity is allowed to go to under the buffer stock scheme. This is the floor price. And there's also a ceiling price, so it's like a house. And the ceiling price is above the equilibrium. And the price isn't allowed to go any higher than the ceiling price. And they need to decide where to set these. They have to be careful about that. As we'll see in another video, it can cause problems if it isn't set in the right place. And sometimes this might be called the maximum price and this the minimum price. Be careful because they are in the opposite place to how they would be for a maximum and a minimum price on their own, where that was an intervention by government. So sometimes for a buffer stock scheme, this might be the maximum price and this might be the minimum price. But be careful because they're not like the normal maximum minimum price diagrams. So we will call it the ceiling price and the floor price. What then happens is that you need to know what your harvest is in a certain year. This will be a perfectly inelastic line because it's just an amount of product which is harvested. It's a fixed amount. So let's imagine there's a very low harvest in one year and we'll call this S1. So it's the supply in that year, S1. And if you find the equilibrium price where S1 is equal to the demand, it's up here. This is a problem for the buffer stock scheme because the price, if we read across to the axis, is higher than the ceiling price. So this is unacceptable. And therefore, the buffer stock scheme will go into action to do something about this. There's a place in West London you might have heard of, and it's called Shepherd's Bush. We'll come back to that shortly. So if you have a harvest over here, it's unacceptable, the price, because the price is too high. What you need to do is you need to go to the closest acceptable price, which is the ceiling price. And they want to get it down to this ceiling price. So what they do is they take stocks. So let's say it's cocoa. They've stored the cocoa beans. They take from their stock of cocoa beans and they sell them onto the market. When they sell from their stock onto the market, this essentially increases the supply on the market. And it brings you to this equilibrium. And therefore, your price is now acceptable. Essentially, at the ceiling price, there was excess demand between here and here. And what they've done by selling onto the market is they've increased the supply. So they've got a new equilibrium here. So this is what you do if your price is above the ceiling price. It's too high. On the other hand, you could have a year where you have a very large harvest. So let's say the harvest is all the way over here. We'll call that S2. In this situation, you again need to see where your supply is equal to your demand. This time, the price is down here. 
the equilibrium now with our S2 and D is too low, this price. It's below the floor, therefore that's unacceptable. So what they need to do is they need to raise the price using the buffer stock scheme so that it's at the closest acceptable price. The closest acceptable price here is the floor price. So the way that they do this is that they buy the cocoa in this case from the market. When they buy it up, they're essentially increasing the demand for the cocoa. When they buy, because the demand goes up, this makes the price go up. So essentially, it's like this demand curve shifting slightly to the right to get to this equilibrium here. So because at the closest acceptable price, there was essentially excess supply. You don't have to know that, but it might help you. If they buy from the market, this increases the demand and we get rid of this excess supply here. So they buy from the market and it causes the price to go up to the floor price. And therefore, we are between these bands. These are considered particularly helpful for producers. That's who it's really aiding the most because they have a more stable income. They have more awareness of what their income may be from year to year. They know if a buffer stock scheme is operating effectively that the price can't go above the ceiling price, but it also can't fall below the floor price. And this also, therefore, will make investment more likely. As we know, firms love certainty. And if they know that the price won't suddenly be very high or very low for the product that they're selling, they're more likely to invest. But mostly it is designed for the producers. So the buffer stock scheme, they're keeping the price between the ceiling price and the floor price. In another video, I'll look at the good and bad things about a buffer stock scheme, how it can be beneficial, but also how it could go wrong.